Well, sometimes we take for granted being an American, but for naturalized citizens, the 4th of July has a special meaning of independence. And did you know that one of our favorite guests on the Morning Blend here was an immigrant to the U.S.? It's true. Carol Barrowman is also a professor of English and writes reviews for the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Great to have you. Nice to be here. Happy 4th of July. Happy 4th of July to you, too. I want to talk about why it's special, but first a little bit about your background. If anybody's ever heard you bring out your accent... I, they know. Th that's right. My, uh, I was born and raised in Scotland, right between Scotland. Glasgow and Edinburgh. And my father worked for Caterpillar Tractor Company, transferred him over here in 1976. And in 1982, I was made a citizen of the United States, took the test and was sworn in in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. <laughs> And now you can very easily go from one dialect to another. I mean, your, your English, you don't pick any of that up. You might even have a little Wisconsin twang in there. I do, I do. I, I probably have more of a nasal for Wisconsin or even Chicago sometimes. Or, or some people say my open A sounds maybe sound a little like I was from out east. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know. But I, I get can that. turn it on and off. I think it's cute. Um, you, one of the special things for you um, about your um, citizenship was the, the judge who did this um, had a little party yes. afterward for you and, and a couple other people. He took, there, it was Sioux Falls, South Dakota, so there weren't very many of us do, um, there. And so there was two Canadians and um, uh, someone, I can't forget where the other woman was from, but he afterwards, he swore us in and he, was, he did it in his full robes. And then he had these little American flag cookies and red punch. And he talked to us about the responsibility of what it meant now to be a citizen. And it took us. It took me about my family about 10 years to get go from green, green card status to American citizenship. But he wanted to make sure that we took it very seriously and what it meant to vote now. And then I could now I could vote. And so he had this little party and it, it was very, very I sweet. Think that's, it I was think very that's sweet. so sweet. Yeah. And so what, the assignment that we gave you um, in honor of uh, the 4th of July was to kind of find books with a, an American theme, a little red, white and blue in each one of these yes. books. And the first one is God Bless America. And this is Lynn um, Munsinger is a, a children's author and honestly if you have not discovered her and you have young children you have got to look her up. This is her book, um, her illustrations and it's a, a family of bears and they're learning about um, the song God Bless America that we all know and so the, the, the words for the, the book are the lyrics for Irving Berlin's song and then Munsinger does these quirky cute bear um, illustrations and it's it's wonderful I, I loved it and if your kid if you want to teach your kids how to sing that song it'd be a good book to to learn from yeah and I think it gives meaning to the 4th of July it's just like Memorial Day or any other holiday you, you'd like to have some meaning behind it and I think it's a great fun way to teach kids that message and plus I think if, uh, every holiday should have a song of some mm -hmm. kind and Christmas has tons of them 4th of July this is a song this is the song I think that's great um, also found Founding Mothers, The Women Who Raised Our Nation. This is actually by Cokie Roberts. A lot of people have seen her political analysis on TV. Yeah, and she's also, she's very um, uh, often a lot on national public radio. And this book is um, sort of little vignettes of people like Martha Washington and um, Abigail Adams and some of the women that we may know a little bit about. But it's also, um, there's a lot of women in there that we've never heard of. There's a, a wonderful section about women who were spies and who would run, who would to carry messages in their bloomers or in other parts of their 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 bodies because men would never you know they never stop them or search them or think that women would ever do such a thing and I, I love that part of the book you learn about women that you might already know about but it's got a lot of stuff about women that, that are, are really truly founding mothers and who's a good reader for that who who, who would you see as being the oh, ideal audience it, for that I think it's pitched to adults but I think tweens or teenagers anyone interested in women's history for sure would be would be really interested she's a really good writer a real personable writer mm -hmm. you feel like she's talking to you and there's a lot of primary documents in there so you get to read letters and journals and things like that from the book I like that this is also for young people George Washington socks I, I, I picked this up, first of all, because, I mean, because I love the title, and were they stinky? Did George <laughs> Washington had to be. have stinky socks? This is a time travel book. Um, it's actually 
a, a book for older readers because it's very serious. They, they end up time traveling back to a very famous battle during the revolution. Okay. I think it's the Battle of Trenton. And my husband will be so impressed that I remember, remember that. Remember it. And um, so the, there is a lot of realism in it about okay. battles and, and wars. But um, the kids learn really interesting lessons. They're modern kids. They're back in the 18th century. I, I really enjoyed it. And I um, like his socks are stinky. Yeah, they got to be. Um, the last one, quickly, America. And you recommend this book by John Stewart for people 13 and over. If you know, and I also picked it for the cover. I mean, it's what's more American than that, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, it's funny. Um, it's very snarky, but it's very much John Stewart. So if you watch The Daily Show, you know what you're getting. It's got hilarious classroom activities because the whole book's written like a textbook. Um, it's very irreverent, sarcastic. So, yeah, you, 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 you want to know what you're getting into when you get there. But my kids as teenagers, the book's been out for a little bit, so maybe they were older teenagers. But th this is laugh out loud, reading aloud to other people in the house. It's a good way to celebrate Fourth of July with a sense of humor. I think that's great. Real quick, want to talk about Bone Quill because you got yes, something coming up. I nice. do. The second book in Bone Quill is coming out um, July 9th is our launch. And um, we, I hope readers will and viewers will pick it up. This is the second in the Hollow Earth series and it will be officially released July 9th. That's exciting. And you're already working on book number three. I'm already a third of the way into book number three. It's awesome. Yes. Great to have you here. Happy yeah. 4th of July. Happy 4th of July to you too. Thank you, Carol. And if you'd like to find out more about Carol, you can go to her website. It's carolbarrelman.com. She's also on Facebook. She's on Twitter. You can go to Goodread also. And again, Carol is with an E and Barrelman is spelled out there on your screen.